Hello, good evening and welcome to News 360, coming to you live from our news up here at Adesawe Kandai Nakra. I am Aisha Yakub. Uh, my name is Alfred Okanse. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint and Piccadilly Biscuits, My Life Insurance. Samples from families of kidnapped girls to enable DNA tests on four human remains recovered from Takradi to be taken tomorrow, August 14. And government compensate families of 2017 Fuasa shooting incident in the Ashanti region. Also, residents of Maira in the Gan West municipality protest over poor state of roads. And in business tonight, Ghana Revenue Authority rolls out mobile app to enable public detect and authenticate genuineness or otherwise of excise tax stamps. And on this national front, UN urges restraint over Hong Kong protests as protesters cripple airports for second day. We've got the details of these and other stories, including sports and entertainment, coming up in the next one hour. Remember, we're also live on DSTV Channel 279. Let's go on to our first story uh, tonight. And government has presented 1,491,000 CDs as compensation package to families and victims of the Fuasa shooting incident in the Chima Kwanwa district of the Ashanti region. Each family of the four deceased persons received 250,000 CDs, while 32 others injured were given 491,000 CDs to cover their medical bills. Four persons, Douglas Adai, Prince Boatin, Kojo Furi, and Kwekuseth, lost their lives when personnel from the Buffalo unit of the police service were dispatched to the town to maintain calm after confusion erupted over the sighting of a new district capital. The delay in the payment of compensation to the families led to similar tension in the community. The compensation was based on recommendations by a seven-member committee set up to look into the matter. Uh, it ranges from 250,000 Ghana cities for those who died in the process to as low as above 4,500. It depends on the gravity of the injury that was suffered by the victims. The killings sparked outrage in the Fuasi community as residents insisted on their innocence. Now, it took the timely intervention of the police to disperse protesters at Pokwa Simaira in the Gan West municipality of the Greater Accra region after they blocked roads over their poor state. They blamed successive governments for failing to get them reconstructed despite numerous promises. Here's a report by Messi Darling Loco. Residents blocked the major roads in this area with stones tables and bent car tires in the five-hour demonstration. The police who were at the scene to ensure it was peaceful had to call for reinforcement. The Gawast Municipal Chief Executive Clement Wilkinson, who wanted to address the residents, was heckled and prevented from any explanations. Residents say all they want to see is the construction of the roads. Assemblyman for Mayura Kwabna Pia said several attempts to get the roads rehabilitated have proven futile. I've followed the issues of this road for quite a long time. Um, but when it gets to the point when the people become disappointed as to various promises that has been made as to the construction of the road, sometimes, even though you wouldn't wish for such an event to happen, but you didn't have any option when they go on rampage. The residents have given government a two-week ultimatum. <laughs> Thank you. 
And this is your election command center. And it's 11 days to the NDC parliamentary primary slated for August 24. Today's focus is on the Ayawaso West Wogan constituency, where actor John Dumelo is counting on what he describes as his appeal among women and the youth to defeat his sole contender. Before Adoboy, Kwachio Frenyama reports. Welcome to the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency. This is Constituency Watch, and my name is Kwache Afreniama. Now, this particular constituency has been in the news for all the bad reasons in the last couple of months. The last by elections held here that, in fact, brought in the incumbent member of parliament, Lydia Seriama Larson, was shrouded in controversy. National security operatives were accused, and in fact, seen in video footages manhandling, abusing and physically assaulting some constituents in this area. The NDC has vowed to reclaim the seat going into the 2020 general election. But that would not be an easy feat to achieve, at least if one does a trend analysis of the election results here since the 2000 general elections. In the 2000 parliamentary elections, for example, the MPP's candidate, George Isaac Amu, secured 17,555 votes, representing 56.20%, while the NDC's Elvis Efriankra got 11,388 votes, representing 36.50%. Fast forward to December 2016, the MPP again won convincingly, securing 57.32% of the votes, with the NDC gaining 39.63%. The death of MP Chirmantia Jaco would present the NDC another opportunity to test its popularity here. However, the outcome of that January 31 by-election may not provide an accurate picture of any possible inroads the NDC may have made since the 2016 polls. Incumbent MP Lydia Sarah Malassan secured 68.80% against the NDC candidate Delan Likwesi Brimpong, who had 30.52%. But this was after the opposition party boycotted the elections following the violence which erupted early on in the process. Going into this primaries, two aspirants, actor John Dumelo and Efu Adobo, have been cleared to contest. John Dumelo believes should he secure the bid of delegates, he's in a better position to attract votes of women and youth in the constituency. If you consider the youth and women, you are about 70% gone. So you are the man who can pull the, the votes of the woman? Definitely. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because you are a fine boy? No, are, are, you, are you telling me? I'm asking. Oh, I beg. I'm just a normal looking guy. I think, I think it's about my personality. It has nothing to do with personal appearance. The actor has been embroiled in many controversies in the past. For example, in 2013, investigative journalist Anas Aremeyao Anas threatened to expose him for allegedly taking advantage of an unnamed woman and a three-year-old baby. He says that allegation was completely false. Sometimes it's best not to comment on certain issues. The more you comment, the more you expose yourself. Or Did not, that happen? No, expose yourself. Um, I don't think it happened. I mean, it never happened. When I caught up with John Dumelo's only opponent, Efu Adobo, she was quick to rubbish the suggestion that the actors appeal among the youth and women who make him a better candidate. You agree with me that in 2016, John Dumelo was part of the celebrities for Mahama. That's the parallel structure of the party that supported President Mahama's campaign. Unfortunately, that was when we lost miserably in the elections. Questioning his contribution to the party over the years, Efu Adobo challenges John Dumelo to provide evidence of his track record in the NDC. He doesn't have that record. He should prove it. There is a lot of dissent. When I was doing NDC in 1992, when we started, I think he was in primary school. In all the 275 constituencies, the National Democratic Congress will be filled in parliamentary candidates. The Ayawasu West Wagon constituency is one area it has to deploy its best campaigning strategies if it indeed wants to reclaim the seat from the MPP. But that will also depend on who it elects as parliamentary candidate going into that election. Will it be John Dumelo or Efu Adobo? Only time will tell. For TV3 News Constituency Watch, Kwache Afreniama, 
Ayawasu West Wagon constituency, Accra. Still on the NDC, the Greater Accra Regional Branch of the party has served notice to sanction any executive member who joins parliamentary aspirants to campaign. The Regional Secretary Tete Chai made this known at an inauguration of the party's women's wing at La Wireless in the La Dade Kotopon constituency. Here's a report by Frederick Clarence Williams. Hundreds of NDC women thronged the venue where five women working committees were to be inaugurated by the Greater Accra Regional Branch of the party. The Greater Accra Regional Secretary Tete Chai assured the women wing of the party's determination to recapture past, saying the NPP has nothing to offer Ghanaians. He warned the party will sanction executives who lead parliamentary aspirants to campaign. What we have decided as a region is that any constituency executive committee member that is involved in any campaign activity for an aspirant and the issue is reported with documentary evidence, straight away that officer will be suspended from the party. The former Greater Accra Regional Minister Neil Lai Afuteagbo charged the party's women wing to work tirelessly to galvanize support for the party in next year's general elections. Out of free will, we should do our own thing, but we should be smart, just like the serpent, and intelligent enough to know who to vote for, so that we will not end up blaming president or the leadership of the party. The former municipal chief executive of La Dadekotopon Assembly, Rita Odole Soa, urged delegates to elect a visionary leader who will spearhead the constituency's development. The people of the NDC of La have seen my track record and they believe and I believe with them that when given the nod, I'll take them to higher heights. The primaries is an internal election to elect one to represent the party and without unity we cannot get there and so I'm campaigning based on unity, I'm campaigning based on working with the grassroots that is getting all involved from the branch level to the ward level. She said her roadmap will be pursued through a selfless, truthful and transparent leadership if elected. Let's go to the eastern region where the Oche or Saji Farm Wetio for a pain says the development of the eastern region depends on agriculture and not mining. While well, addressing the second eastern regional GGA awards in Koforidia, the Ochiman overlord, who is also the president of the eastern regional house of chiefs, observed mining has not provided the mining communities with the development they deserve. The awards ceremony was on the theme Securing a Malaria-Free Ghana, the Role of the Media. The Ochehene Osajifwa Moetio for Repenyi II deplored the incidents of dugouts having been left to gather water and eventually breeding mosquitoes, causing malaria, reducing productivity and, in some cases, death. Environmental degradation and poor sanitation are powerful contributors to many of today's pressing global health threats. 90% of over 4 million deaths caused by malaria are linked to environmental deg degradation, such as open water pits and irrigation, such as one constructed by illegal mining. The Eastern Regional Chairman of the Ghana Journalist Association, Maxwell Kudako, expressed concern over the lack of interest in health reporting among journalists in the region. Will it not be so shocking and sad that as a year earmark to ensure a malaria-free society, there was no single entry for malaria reporting? Of all the health news reports filed to compete for awards tonight, no journalist wrote or reported on malaria in this region. TV3's New Day anchor and Community Connects broadcast journalist Johnny Hughes was among the award receivers. 
Now, samples from families of kidnapped girls to enable DNA tests on four human remains recovered from Takrade are to be taken tomorrow, August 14. Director of Public Affairs for the Ghana Police Service, ACP David Eklu, who made this known after the acting IGP and his team visited the family, said the police will not object to an independent DNA test to further assure them of results. ACP David Eklu was briefing the media at the Western Regional Headquarters of the Ghana Police in Sekendi after the Inspector General of Police, James Opombuenu, and a team of police personnel paid a visit to four families whose relatives have gone missing for more than a year in the Sekendi Takradi metropolis. The IGP's visit took him to Takwa to the house of the fourth victim, Ruth Abaka, whose case has not received much attention. At the house of the second victim, Ruth Love Quason, the families expressed the desire to conduct an independent DNA test after that of the police. In a response, ACP David Eklu said the IGP has given his assurance that there will be no objection for an independent test if that will assure the families the more. The critical stage now is to get the DNA samples of the four families which will be matched against the remains that we have found. One or two of the family members raised that concern and it was made clear to them by the Inspector General of Police and his team that we don't have any objection to that. If they want to engage an independent person or expect to do that, it is, it is normal that you need to confirm what we have. So we don't have any objection to that. He also revealed that the Director of Religious Affairs of the Ghana Police Service, ACP Reverend Father George Arthur, has been appointed as the liaison officer for the families. ACP Eklu added that there will be an after-action review where any officer found to have been complicit in the discharge of duty in the course of the case will be dealt with. The critical stage now is to get the DNA samples of the four families which will be matched against the remains that we have found. One or two of the family members raised that concern and it was made clear to them by the Inspector General of Police and his team that we don't have any objection to that. If they want to engage an independent person or expect to do that, it is, it is normal that you need to confirm what we have. So we don't have any objection to that. Now, this year's Homo in Gamashi comes off this Saturday, August 17th. The celebration ushers in a new calendar year for the Gandangme people. A statement signed by the Gang Paramount to Jase Ni Nabi Anya Taki Yaboy extends best wishes and felicitations to the chiefs, Wulame, Queen Mothers, and the people of Gandangme. He urged the people to mark the day peacefully, devoid of acrimony. Jonathan Takikomi is spokesperson for the Gamanche. It is the wish of Boni Kintake Atamalache that uh, the Omowa will be celebrated in a peaceful and joyful manner. Because this leads us to our calendar for the year. However, it is the wish of the Jassy to express their sincere gratitude to His, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Nana Adudanko Akufuado, for having come to intervene when uh, some chiefs from the Ghana Traditional Council called on him with uh, a petition to have a new king installed. This Omowa, it is to be participated by anybody. When you are in Accra, you are part of us. So we are enjoying, you enjoy with us. We are mourning you mourn with this. So as for more, it starts from uh, Friday 16th. Friday, that is the one we call the Twin Festival. All twins celebrate their festival on the Friday. And then the following day, Saturday, is the Omowo, where the chiefs will be sprinkling the traditional meal, which is the Kokwe. But you are all invited. Now, an MTN video report this evening, our citizen journalist, Mensa Lord Abdul Bashiru, expresses concern over multiple meters on electricity poles at Odoko in Accra. This is the state of prepaid meters in Ghana. The meters are lined up on a pool in numerous numbers. 
this is very dangerous whereby whenever one meter catches fire it automatically will catch the whole meters on the pool this is an example of a meter that caught fire if it has not been the help of some residents around this was going to be a disaster in one of the communities we pleading on government to do something about this my name is Mensah Lord Abdul Bashir reporting from Accra You can also send your video report via WhatsApp on 0551 433 That's 0551 It's We're live here on News 360. We're live on DSTV Channel 279. All across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. We're back shortly. Do stay. Welcome back to News 360. Let's get into the business news tonight. And the Ghana Revenue Authority has rolled out a mobile app to enable the public detect and authenticate the genuineness or otherwise of the excise tax stamps. Now, the Commissioner General, Emmanuel Kofi T, who made this known here in Accra, said two cases are already in court following the violation of the policy. The implementation of the excise tax stamp policy took effect on January 1 last year. The Excise Tax Stamp Act 2013, Act 873, requires that excise tax stamps shall be affixed on specified excisable products to enable GRA monitor the exact quantities declared by manufacturers and importers for taxation purposes. This makes the genuineness and authenticity of the tax stamp critical to the authority. The GRA has been clamping down on defaulting retailers and distributors to ensure compliance. The mobile app, which works with an Android phone with at least a 5.0 capacity, will enable the public detect and authenticate the genuineness or otherwise of excise tax stamps. The GRA Commissioner General, Emmanuel Kofinti, said two cases on the violation of the excise tax stamp policy are before the court. Before October, the, the number of taxpayers on the excise were just about 110. As we speak to you now, we are having as many as 250. It means that as many as 140 were operating uh, in, in the shadows. And so the, it has allowed compliance to improve. And for those who are even operating previously in the excise, some of them, the, the collections of revenue on them has changed. The GRA officials, after the launch, moved to some malls to assess its effectiveness. If you ask for stamp for 300 ml product, obviously the 300 ml, the price will not be as high as, say, a product with 500 ml, you know, volume. And for that matter, if you don't place the right stamp on the right product, we will take it that you don't want to pay the right taxes that you are fixing stamps acquired for low volume products to a high volume products. Chief Revenue Officer of Excise, Kwabena Pawanto, cautioned retailers against purchasing identifiable products without the tax stamp. Other than that, the authority will continue to visit shops and ensure compliance. <laughs> Well, the Business Development Ministry has reported that it's created some 4,750 jobs under the capacity building for young entrepreneurs and startup initiatives. The Sector Minister, Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Awal, gave the figures when he took his turn at the Middle Press Series here in Accra. The Ministry for Business Development was created to develop and implement policies and programs to promote the entrepreneurial capacity of Ghanaians, particularly the youth. The sector minister, Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Awal, said the several initiatives and key interventions has created jobs. Today we can announce over 4,000 jobs have been created, from 27,000 and supporting 1,050 with funding between a minimum of 10,000 and maximum of 100,000. He noted 7,000 young entrepreneurs were trained under the Presidential Business Support Program, PBSP, with 1,350 receiving funding in 2017. We just completed the training of 12,000 young people. The training was meant, among other things, to build their capacity 
to run, manage, and own businesses. He also stated that 2,000 entrepreneurs across the country have also been provided with entrepreneurship training under the Young Entrepreneurs Program. Other programs by the ministry include Green Businesses, Building Entrepreneurship Culture Among the Youth, SEI, the Presidential Pitch, as well as Capacity Building and Funding for Women Entrepreneurs and Women Entrepreneurs with Disability. The ministry intends to create micro-enterprises in all 16 regions to support young entrepreneurs and also train 2,000 headquarters, also known as CAE, to improve their business skills. Over the next few, one or two years, we're also going to help train CAE with the Minister of Gender. A lot of them are in town. We think they can do their businesses better if they're given, given the capacity to train them, to settle some of them and do their business better. The ministry further plans to roll out a program aimed at building the capacity of metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives, MMDCs and other stakeholders to support business development activities in their districts. Well, that's it for business tonight here on News 360. Remember, there's more business news on 3news.com. Stay with us. There's more news coming up. Welcome back. Let's do some more stories now. And President Akufuado says Ghanaians will not entrust power into the hands of the opposition National Democratic Congress in 2020 due to their determination to cancel the free senior high school policy. The president was addressing staff and students of the Bogatanga Senior High School in the Upper West Region as part of his two-day working visit to the region. President Akufuado noted the 2020 election is going to give the electorate another opportunity to choose between the dominant parties. I know that there are people in this country who don't want this policy, who have been campaigning against this policy, and they are dreaming that they are going to come back to power to cancel the policy. I want them to know that the people of Ghana are not going to subscribe to those dreams. They are not coming back to power and the free senior high school policy has come to stay in our country. The president urged the first batch of free SHS students who will sit for the WASI next year to put up a stellar performance to shame the critics. He assured authorities of the school that a contract for a new dormitory and classroom blocks will be awarded in the next two weeks. More than 1.2 million students will be enrolled in free senior high education when the third batch of students are admitted in the next few weeks. President Ikufada noted, investment in education is the sure way of ensuring Ghana's development. Before I became president in my campaign, I said I was prepared to use the oil money to educate our children and not to allow it to go into the pockets of politicians and civil servants and everything. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Minister for Education, Dr. Matthew Pokoprempe said the decision by the Kofuado-led government to spend the oil revenue on free senior high school is the best investment for the country. Let's go for some entertainment news. Still feeding you up to the Ghana Most Beautiful and some past GMB queens and participants have been sharing the expectations ahead of the start of the 2019 GMB. Ozuorai and Chelsea Ifa Frempa interacted with some of them. The 2019 GMB was launched at Kumase, the citadel of culture, amidst rich display culture. Sixteen poised ladies will be seeking to make their region proud as a show kickstart on Sunday, August 18. The historic launch was graced by dignitaries, royalty, as well as some past GMB queens. They encouraged their wannabe queens to strive harder and put their best foot forward 
if their dream of winning the competition is to be achieved. You should focus on where you are going and not who is at your back. They should just focus on what they are doing. They should give out their best and never forget that the only key to success is God Almighty. They should stay focused and they should make sure they concentrate on their task. The weekly task is very important. I do know that those constitute about 70% of the outcome of the competition, but I also encourage them to bring their best because the whole world is watching. They shouldn't give up, stay focused and keep their eyes on the crown, the cash, the car and the crown. <laughs> <laughs> the cash, the car, and the crown. Very important. Three C's. <laughs> Very oh, necessary, all of I'm it. And then bragging rights. Yeah. Mm, 16 contestants for Ghana's Most Beautiful this season. Lovely. It's going to be exciting. And that's how we wrap up this edition of News 360. My name is Aisha Yakubu. And my name is Alfred Okansi. Stay with us on TV3.